Good morning. I'm Asan Giordano, and this is your DMV Daily Dose for Monday, December 30th, 2019. It's currently foggy and 52 degrees in Baltimore. Expect cloudy skies and rain starting in the morning with mixed conditions for the rest of the day. Today's high will be 60 degrees, and the low will be 46. Well, our beloved Baltimore Ravens finish out the season strong, riding a 12-game win streak after stomping the Steelers 28-10 for a franchise record 14-win season. The RG3-led Ravens sent Pittsburgh home for the year and broke the New England Patriots' 1978 record of 3,165 rushing yards on the season, which stood for the past 41 years. The record was broke on a nine-yard Gus Edwards run, adding yet another record to their record-setting season. Edwards galloped for 130 yards yesterday as the lead running back with the absence of Mark Ingram, who remains hurt but is expected to be ready for the playoffs in two weeks. And with the Patriots losing to the Dolphins, the Chiefs get the second seed and the other bye, so we won't be back in action until primetime divisional game on Saturday, January 11th at 8.15 down at the bank against the lowest seeded team to win in next, week, next week's wildcard weekend, which will see the Tennessee Titans travel to New England to take on the Patriots and the Buffalo Bills traveling to Houston to take on the Texans. Both games on Saturday and each team having already been beat by the Ravens this year except the number six seed Tennessee Titans. But Miami, get ready, because here we come. And Baltimore boxing legend Javante Tank Davis stayed unbeaten in his career with a 12th round stoppage of Uricas Gumbo to win a lightweight title Saturday night. Fighting past the ninth round for the first time in his career, Davis, who's 23-0 with 22 knockouts, showed why his nickname is Tank releasing a barrage of punches in the final round before a left uppercut to the head ended the fight at, a, at the 144 mark when referee Jack Rays called the fight. And in sadder news, former state senator Ulysses S. Curry, a mild-mannered black lawmaker from Prince George's County, died early Friday morning after a lengthy illness. He was 84 years old. The sharecropper, the son of a sharecropper, I'm sorry. Curry became one of the most powerful African-American legislators in Maryland, serving as the chairman of the powerful Senate and Budget Taxation Committee for seven years. He was elected to the House of Delegates in 1986 and won a Senate seat in 1984. A strong advocate for education funding and a mentor to many of the Prince George's County legislators he served in the Maryland General Assembly for 32 years before retiring in 2018. Curry was indicted by federal authorities in 2010 for consulting uh, for Shoppers Food Warehouse, the grocery, store, the grocery store chain, where he was accused of accepting bribes for the company in exchange for political favors, but wound up being acquitted in 2011. He was censored by his colleagues in the state senate and voted himself for his own censure for not reporting his consulting work and the nearly $250,000 in income he received on ethics forms or, or informing state authorities of his work the, year, the, the following year. He was also stripped of his gavel on the budget panel, diminishing his influence in Annapolis. However, voters of the Prince George's County's 25th District returned him to the office two more times, both in 2010 as well as 2014. Citing failing health reasons, Curry announced his intention to resign from the Senate in 2016, but he rescinded that resignation when local Democratic leaders on the state central committee could not settle on a replacement form, which included his wife, Shirley Gravely, Gravely Curry, who was among those seeking his seat. At the time, he announced, since my announcement, it has been nothing but petty political jockeying and deal making with only 2018's election in mind, he wrote in a letter to then Senate President Mike Miller explaining his decision to stay on. He was a gentle giant who will certainly be missed. Rest in peace. 
A United States Congressman John Lewis of Georgia announced Sunday night that he has stage four pancreatic cancer, vowing that he will stay in office and fight the disease with the tenacity in which he has fought racial discrimination and other inequalities dating back to the civil rights era. Lewis, 79 years old, and the youngest and last survivor of the big six civil rights activists in a group that was once led by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., said in a statement that the cancer was detected earlier this month during a routine medical visit. Our prayers are with you, Congressman Lewis. During the past five years of 300 plus homicides across the city of Baltimore, the highest total number of homicides was 342 held twice in both 2015 as well as in 2017, until this weekend, when Baltimore recorded 343 homicides for the year on Saturday with the fatal shooting of a 32-year-old man in the Bel Air Addison neighborhood. Shortly before 11 p.m., city officers found the man lying in the 4300 block of Dudley Avenue in the area south of Bel Air Road and two blocks from Heron Run Park. The man had been shot multiple times and later died in the area hospital. The city had gone two days without a fatal shooting, the last occurring on late Thursday night in the Walthor neighborhood. Baltimore this year has set a record for killings per capita. The city saw its highest number of homicides in 1993 when 353 people were shot, but there was also more than 100,000 more residents during that time. And remember, tonight, that's right, tonight, the band is back together again from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. as Ivan, Mark, Sean, and your man, Mr. Politics, come back together like Voltron for an end-of-the-year show that you don't want to miss. Tune in to the DMV Daily Radio Show live on our Facebook and YouTube pages at DMV Daily News as we wrap up this entire year, what's went down, and look into the future of the 2020 elections. And I'm your man, Mr. Politics, and this has been your DMV Daily Dose for Monday, December 30th, 2019. For more information on the articles that I've mentioned, just go on over to the website at www.dmvdaily.news.